Morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Morning, Daniela. Thanks for all your efforts in getting this all organized. Too. Holly, you need to put on your camera. I need to see you. I haven't seen you for such a long time. Hi, Glenn. I'll put it on eventually, but. Okay. <laughs> <Not now. laughs> I miss you. It's so, I haven't seen you for so long. So. Yeah, I know. Now I'm, I'm charging my computer and. Um, I'm sitting in bad lighting. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> were there materials that we were supposed to have that I didn't? Yeah, there was. You should have a uh, workbook. It's called the short workbook. It's 26 pages. And then okay. there should be an Excel spreadsheet that you should have also. OK. Because that's what we we'll Can you check your email? I think I sent that to you shortly. Like a few minutes ago. Okay, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I just realized I had to register. Um, okay. What's what's the subject heading? Daniela? Oh, okay. I have it. Voila. So, Danielle, you can just tell me when we're ready to go or if we can start now, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to get going. It's 9.32, so I want to respect the uh, time of everyone who's uh, come here on time. Um, we've got lots to cover today. Um, this is a great course. Uh, I really hope um, my goal is for you at the end of this is for you to have um, we're going to do this exercise at the beginning where you're going to figure out your kind of like five key activities for the next 90 days. 
but really more importantly, just to have a solid business plan that looks very easy and achievable for the next, um, you know, uh, 365 days, I guess. Um, and it's a really, you know, this course started as a three day course. Um, when we first started bringing this to Toronto, that was about 15 years ago. And then it went to two days and now it went, then it went to one day. And last year, I think I, well, I taught, you know, all across BC, Manitoba, Ontario, uh, Quebec, Newfoundland, all the maritime provinces, uh, teaching this one day course. And then they basically rewrote the whole course and just condensed it down to this really simple three hour class. So i um, really excited to share it with you today. I hope you get a lot out of it. Um, so let's get going. So first of all, happy new year. Like we don't need to start on January 1st uh, as our new year. Um, why don't we just start today? It's November 13th, uh, 2020. And uh, don't wanna kind of lose the next six weeks of this year. And I think it's a perfect time right now for us to plan the next year and then just start implementing, uh, you know, the market will probably slow down in the next couple of weeks. And um, so we've got lots of time to really, um, first of all, launch our business plan and then really work on it. So let's get, uh, let's get to it. Who am I? Oh, kind of did this backwards. Um, you know, I'm the founder of Keller Williams Referred Realty, uh, Referred Urban. I'm also the OP of uh, Keller Williams London Lifestyle. So we have about 550 great, amazing associates in four offices. Um, so I opened the first one in Toronto um, almost 17 years ago. It's hard to believe that it's gone uh, so quickly. Um, also CEO of Preferred Advance and Touch33, which is my marketing um, company, which does all, a lot of my books and a lot of my coaching. Um, and I've been in the business for 31 years, hard to believe. Also co-founder, um, also the regional training director for Keller Williams Romania which is kind of funny because I started that three years ago, never been to Romania, don't speak Romanian. Like what could go wrong really, if you think about it. But it's been quite an adventure um, going over there to um, build franchises and coach and train. It's been just a really great experience. Um, I write books, I do podcasts, I coach agents. Um, and right now what's kind of getting me excited is I'm writing this TV sitcom. Uh, we're just in a pilot stage and it's kind of like, crazy real estate stories meets the office and um that's it's it's you know i think it's a lot better than you know love it or list it or selling sunset or any of those other shows i want this to be like a comedy because you know all of you get to see some crazy stuff that nobody could even think up and write and so i just kind of kind of brought the top stories and then we've got um, nine people in the cast um and they would be agents probably just like yourself um, and owners and clients. And we're just going to kind of mix it all together. So I'm hoping to kind of launch that next year. It's going to be really fun. Um, so done a couple of books. This is a book I did um, about six years ago um, where I sent an email at that time. We had 200 agents. I sent an email to everyone. I said, who would like to double their income in the next 12 months? And 23 people responded, which I thought was a bit low, but I'm like, okay. So I worked with those 23 people and in the next 12 months, uh, everyone doubled their income, some tripled and quadrupled. And so I just kind of put the hacks of that inside of this book. And what I learned from that was the basis of my second book, which was um, if, if I could get agents to stop trying to be everything to everyone and just be something to somebody and find their own niche market, then... Um, it's the path to what we call getting perfect fit and high margin clients. So that's that book. You can go to glennmcqueenie.com and just download it for free. Um, so just feel free to go ahead and do that. And then this book I wrote just came out a couple of months ago. Was It's called Shut Down Slingshot, the eight winning mindsets that real estate agents need to double down over the next hundred days. And the reason I wrote that was I, you know, in the end of March and April, you know, calling all of our agents and checking in and seeing how they're doing and how are you holding up? And I just realized that 25% of them were completely shut down um, in fear, not going to do anything, uh, you know, really, really nervous about the future. And then um, I noticed that another 20% of them were kind of going, well, Glenn, this could be a really great opportunity market. This could be my chance to get my unfair share of the market. So I kind of wrote that as a, as a, almost as a book for you to sit there and go, well, here's the eight winning mindsets 
that you need to really double down and and really get your unfair share of the market. I personally believe right now is the best opportunity you will ever have in your real estate career to pick up market share. When things are going really well and lots of agents are entering the business, it's really hard for you to get your market share. I was kind of fortunate, although it didn't feel that way. But when I started in 1989, the market was pretty good. And then it crashed in 1990. And um, what I saw was a lot of big brokerages went out of business and a lot of the successful incumbent agents and other agents left the business. And that gave me my chance to get my market share. And I really think that's what this is all about right now. Like there are some people who are just not going to adapt to the new virtual reality of real estate. And other people will just jump on and take their share. And um, so I'm really excited. I'm probably more excited. If I was a dog, I'd be wagging my tail right now. Like I'm so excited about this market and your opportunity to get your unfair share of the market. So, so here is the eight mindsets in the book and then we'll get right to the course, okay? So I just talked about um, you have to go digital. You have to be a digitizer and go virtual as quickly as possible. So in April, when I wrote this book, I was like, you have to move to virtual open houses, virtual showings, um, Facebook live showings. And, and I was writing all this and then it was really interesting because at Megacamp, I was watching the panelists from Facebook and Google tell us in August that you should get digital. I'm like, yeah, I knew that ahead of time. You got to make this as simple as possible for the consumer. And whoever, whoever person who's going to win the game is the person who makes it faster, simpler, easier for the consumer. And if you can do virtual listing presentations and virtual buyer consultations and a lot more virtual seminars, virtual showings, especially if we do go into another shutdown and over the next couple of weeks, you're going to win the game. And all the people who are up there cold calling, door knocking, on the phones, the traditional way of making business, they just don't have an avenue anymore. So this is your great chance. And that leads me to the second one, which is to be the disruptor. You know, you're either going to disrupt the market yourself by coming up with something really unique or you're going to get disrupted out. I was watching last night on TV and, and a commercial came up for Home Light, which is basically it's a, it's a lead aggregator. Like they grab, they advertise, you call in and then they send the lead to agents and take like a referral fee. And what they came up with last night was really interesting. They were like, hey, we'll just buy your home. That's the iBuyer program. And a lot of people are moving into that lane. So know that the whole prop tech business in Wall Street is trying to knock you out of the business. And you can either give it to them or you can go disrupt the market yourself. Number three is just be a learner, um, be learning based. You know, I'm assuming if you're at Keller Williams, because we really are a coaching, mentoring um, teaching company um, that you're already learning based, but this is where you get to learn and grow and just get your unfair share of the market. Number four is to be a game changer. You know, when a game changes, just create a new game. Don't get, you know, sucked into, oh, I want to go back to the good old days. Um, if you imagine like, like even a great poker player, it doesn't matter what cards they're dealt with. It's how they play the hand. And I think that's my message to you. The game has changed. We got some new cards to so just go play, play the game. Uh, be focused on key activities. Um, be a player. And this is the biggest insight I got is your inner game creates a better outer game. So if you're really nervous about the future and negative, you're going to attract other clients who are negative about um, who are negative and nervous about the future. And if you're confident about the future and you think this is a really great opportunity for everybody, that's who you're going to attract. The last two is just the grower and the tester and the grower is just about have a growth mindset. Always be growing for the sake of growing. Um, always make your future bigger than your past. You know, I'm 55 now and I my plan is to live till 120. So that gives me 65 more years. And that's very strategic because I'm trying to make my life bigger than uh, what my past is. And um, that's how you're going to win this game right now. And then finally, just be a tester. Go fail forward. Go test the marketplace and make the marketplace your creative partner um, in trying new things. Um, that's how you actually win the new game of real estate is just get out there. So enough about me, let's get to the uh, course. So um, 
you have a manual, you should have a manual now. It's 26 pages long. We will be referring to it occasionally. Um, most of it will be on the PowerPoint. And then you should also have an Excel spreadsheet, um, which is the best part of this new course, which you can just punch in how much money you wanna make, um, what your you know, average commission is, it tells you the units, and then you can build your whole economic model. Um, and that's what my goal is today, is that you're going to hopefully get a different mindset. Then you're going to build your economic model um, for 2021. And you will know by the, like within the first 40 minutes of this class, you're gonna have your complete business plan on the economic model completed. You're gonna know how much money you're gonna make, what your average commission is, how many, what percent is gonna be buyers and sellers, what your conversion rates are, how many contracts you have to take, how many appointments you have to go on and how many leads you have to generate. And that's what I love about this course. It's so it's simple, it's short, it's concise. And um, I really think you're gonna get a lot out of it. And once you're making all this money, we also have to start putting in the lead generation model. And I'll be talking about a lot of hacks that I've learned. Um, and I think dispelling a lot of what a lot of people think is what you're supposed to do for lead generation. I personally believe that the best lead generation for you is the one that suits you. That's where you bring your natural ability, your unique skills to a target market of people you love to work with. And when you get that combination, you get to work with really perfect fit, high margin people. And then once you're making all this money, we have to start watching it. So we're going to go to the budget model. And then as you build a team, you're going to probably have to add some people on. That's going to be the organizational model. And then we're going to talk about the expansion model. And at the end, we're going to put it all together. So just to let you know right now, we will be taking a five minute break every 50 minutes. So it's a five minute break that I'm hoping you'll be back in 10 minutes. So we're going to break at 1020. We're going to break at 1120. And uh, so you have plenty of time to return text, phone calls, do whatever you have to do. So let's um, get to the goals of the course is understand those five models. You're going to have your complete business plan. I want you to hopefully execute plan, run with the plan, get a lot more freedom of time, money, relationships, and purpose. Because if I can show you today how to double your income, you're going to have a lot more freedom of time, money, relationships, and purpose. And when you have money, you have fewer problems because you can just write a check to solve that problem. What I mean by that is if you need your social media done, you write a check to somebody. If you need admin help, you write a check to somebody. If you need a bookkeeper, you write a check to somebody, but that all requires money. So I want you to really think big today and um, just, it's going to be great. I love this course. Uh, and then finally, just give you a lot of valuable hacks for your business. Um, and then with the most important one, which is what I'll do at the end, is going to be the four question contract converter dialogue. This is a dialogue that um, I've been using and teaching. And I'll tell you, it will probably increase your conversion rate to about 90% on every appointment that you go on to. It's just such a, such a great gift, okay? So, but before I get into the course, I want you to grab a piece of paper right now and a pen, and you have to do some independent work, okay? This is interactive. It's not gonna be me droning on all day. Right now, grab a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to look back, okay? So look back over the last 90 days, and what are the things that are making pr you proudest of what you've achieved? What's really working right now? Like, what are your successes over the last 90 days? So just take a second right now, look back 90 days before we start planning for the future. Let's just go back into some gratitude right now of what's really been working well in your business for the last 90 days. So I'm gonna give you two minutes to just quickly write down the five things that are working really well for you right now, okay? Maybe you brought on an assistant. Maybe you started a geographic farm area. Maybe you're on command using Facebook Lead Accelerator. Just go back 90 days. What have you achieved? Maybe you've had your best quarter ever. Just write all of those things down now. We've got a minute, 30 seconds left.
Don't do anything. In the last 90 days, what did I do? Talk to people. Okay, just a minute left. Five things you're really proud of over the last 90 days. Oh, I know I took that out. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to move forward right now and we're going to look at today. Okay. So right now, what's hot in your business? When you look at everything that's going on today, which areas are you making the most progress and making you really confident? What's really working right now in your business? And just take a second right now and write down those five things right now that are getting you like what's working? Let's just look at today right now. I'll give you two minutes to do that. Okay, just one minute left. And at any time during this, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask me, or you can go into the chat room. On the breaks, I will be staying here live and just answering a lot of those questions. So what are five things that are working really well right now? Okay, 30 seconds left. Okay, just start finishing up. Great. So let's go to the last part of this. Now looking ahead over the next 90 days, so now we're moving up to February 13th, what would have to happen right now for you to be on February 13th to look back and say, that was a great quarter? What are the five things, people, models, systems that you could put into your business in the next 90 days um, that would keep you excited? It gives you a great sense of the future. Um, you know, these are your goals. So maybe it's, uh, I'm going to be hiring my first admin. Maybe I'm going to be calling my sphere of influence. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of hacks for that on what to do right now and say to, to reach that. Um, maybe it's um, starting a new farm area. Maybe it's um, Google AdWords, doing SEO, doing Facebook. What is getting you excited now uh, over the next 90 days? And just quickly kind of write those things down.
Okay, one minute left. Okay, 30 seconds. Great, okay, so now we actually looked back for 90 days. You wrote down hopefully three to five things. We looked at the present and then we looked out to the future. So now I want you to just take a look at your list right now um, and circle the five things like that you'd love to focus on for the next 90 days. So you might go back, now, there could have been a project you started a couple of weeks ago that you wanna bring forward. It could be something you're working on today, or it could just be those five on your list over the next 90 days. But if you can just circle those five, these are going to be what we call your multipliers, your biggest leaps. Uh, these are your goals. And most people don't say no to their own goals, only someone else's. And this is what your core focus is gonna be for the next 90 days. And um, this, um, exercise is something that I do. Uh, you know, I pay $25,000 a year to be a strategic coach in Toronto and every 90 days people fly in from all over the world. And this is the exercise we do at the very beginning of every class. And most people at the end of this exercise go, I'm good. <laughs> like I got my five things I can just go and do. Uh, now I know what my core focus activity is. So just circle those five things, uh, write them down. And that's your first hack for today is I know my core focus areas for the next five days. So just circle those and write them down. And then if you have a, your phone with you, you wanna take a picture of the screen, or you can just write it down. What you do is where it says project purpose here, you put in one of those goals. So maybe it's like, I'm gonna call my top 20 core advocate clients. Um, so that's what you would write here. And then write down what the best result would be. Well, I know if I talk to my top 20 core advocates and I do the two question referral thing, which you'll learn in just a few minutes, um, that I know that I'm gonna to be top of mind with them, I'm gonna be, feel reconnected, um, uh, that there's a high probability they might send me a referral in the next little while, so that's your best result. Your worst result was if I don't do it, then I will not feel connected, they're not gonna to be top of mind, they could be sending their friends or, or you can do business with somebody else, and so there should be some pain there on your worst result, and then, and the success criteria, you would just put in, get three referrals over the next 30 days from them. Um, feel reconnected to my top 20 people who really like me. Um, you know, so that's what your success criteria is going to be. So if you can just um, take a picture of this screen, you should have your five now. And this is basically the first hack of the course. Like, let's just, now we got our five. We're good to go. Okay, so let's get into the course, okay? So Gary Keller wrote a book, you know, called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And what he did is he researched um, all the top agents and he discovered that there's a couple of truths. One is most of them, if you start your business based on a model and then add your creativity on top of it, you're much better off than if you started with creativity and then tried to plug a model on top of it. That's the theme of his book. The other thing that I've learned in real estate um, is he calls it moving from E to P. He didn't create this. This has been done around for a long time is that most of us got into real estate. We use all of our natural ability and entrepreneurial skills. And then we just kind of hit the ceiling of achievement. 
And you know you've hit it when you look back and over the last couple of years, you've made the same, about the same amount of money. And the only way to break through that um, is to start putting in some foundational models into your business because you only know what you know. And because you only know what you know, you're only making this amount of money. When you know more and know better, faster, easier ways to do it, it's quite easy to make a lot of money. And when you do that, you're going to break through. Then you're going to hit this new achievement ceiling and maybe you'll bang your head against that for a while. And then you have to kind of retool, put in some great systems to break through. And my goal for this course is to make you think a lot bigger today than you've ever thought before in your life and to set a really big model. And so I'm kind of excited about that. But it all comes back to what he says in his book. He goes, in order for you to achieve these goals, you have to have a big why. And, you know, we don't have time to talk about the big why today. But if you want to find out more about it, there's a guy named Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, who um, wrote a book called Starts With Why. It's a really great book. If you don't like to read and you like to watch, I think he's got a TED Talk. Um, there's a guy named Blake Mikowski who uh, founded Tom's Shoes. That's, uh, you know, they're like those alpaca shoes that if you buy one, they give one to um, an underprivileged person in, around the world. And um, so he, he's got a book called Start Something That Matters. And it's a really good book just to kind of get you framed in there. Um, today, we're going to be talking about big goals and you're going to set bigger goals than you think. Um, and then think about creating value and customer service and um, thinking more competitively, strategically, getting into action. And once you've done all you can do, then you have to start thinking about talent, systems and standards. Like, who am I going to hire? Who, who can I leverage out? Um, obviously, you're going to be working on your knowledge and skills and just be really persistent and resilient because it's the people who are persistent and resilient who are going to win the game over the next couple of years. And finally, think profit. So uh, this is all covered in the book. This is, is based on his triangle. And I just realized there's a typo here on where it says leverage down here is supposed to say leads because he, everything, so we're gonna build your economic model, but it all starts with leads. And once you have enough leads and you get a lot of listings, at some point, you're just gonna to have to hire people and bring people on your team and get leverage. So um, here's the five models we're gonna cover quickly, is the economic model, that's to achieve the net income you want. Um, I don't know who's, if you just, if everyone could just mute yourself right now, that'd be awesome. Uh, then the lead generation model, uh, you know, you need to generate so many leads, then we're going to watch our money, then we're going to decide who we're going to hire. And once we really nail it in one area, we might want to consider expanding it and, you know, opening another office in London, Ontario, or Windsor, or, you know, just building an expansion team. And that's what the course is really about. So we're going to move to the economic model, and you're going to have this done before we take our first break. So within 20 minutes, you're going to know exactly um, how many, how much money you're going to make, how many leads you need to do. And we're really just going to be talking about numbers now for the next 20 minutes, all numbers, but numbers speak. They tell you if you're on track to hit your goals and the numbers that we're going to focus on today are the number of leads, the number of appointments, the number of contracts signed and the number of units sold, because that's going to lead us to the number of closed units. So let's get right into the economic model. I'm going to walk you through the exercise of the millionaire real estate agent, which is a net income of a million. Then you're going to open an Excel spreadsheet. So hopefully you all have it. If not, please reach out to Danielle and she can send it to you um, because you're going to need it in about five or 10 minutes. So, so here is the economic model. If you want to make 1 million in net income, you need to do 2.5 million of gross commission. And then you're going to have operating expenses of about 30% and costs of sale of 30%. A cost of sale are the splits that you're on with people on your team. So if you're on a 50-50 split with, with a buyer agent, 50% of that is called your cost of sale. It's also um, the split that you have with Keller Williams and the royalty fee. Those are costs of sale, okay? And then you have to um, divide that by your average commission amount. And that's gonna tell you how many units you need to do. 
And on this model, they basically said, let's do it 50-50. So if 50% of the 350 units here are going to be listings, I need to get 175 listings. If my conversion rate is 70%, then I need to take 250 listings if only 70% of them sell. Now, I know that's not the case in Toronto. I would say it's probably 90% or 95%. But if I'm gonna take 250 listings, I'm going at a conversion rate of 75%, then I just need to go on 333 total seller appointments. That's what the model in his book says, right? And on the buy side, I need to do the same. 175 buyers, only 70% of them actually buy. I need to take 250 buyer contracts. And if I close 70% of the appointments, then I need to go on 357 total buyer appointments. Okay, so now we divide that by a month and it tells us we have to go on seven a week or 26 a month. And that is the economic model that Gary Keller talked about in The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Okay, so we're going to work on yours in just two minutes. But you have to understand, let's just get to it right now. So our conversion rates, um, and I'd love to get feedback from you. You can put it in the chat or just unmute yourself. This is a really core thing that we have to like agree upon. Um, like how many, if you take 10 buyer appointments, how many of them do you actually end up working with? Is it seven out of 10? Is it three out of 10? Is it nine out of 10? Like you have to put in your own numbers, right? And on listing appointments, how many do you actually get? If most of your business is sphere of influence, referral, um, past clients, then your conversion rate should be 80 or 90%. If most of your business is cold leads all the time, then your conversion rate could be 20%. If you're a mega agent who does tons of listings, the best I've ever seen they then do is about 50%. And that's because they're usually competing against similar incumbent agents. You know, like there's people who are thinking about selling in the Junction or Bloor West right now or High Park. And they're going to interview a lot of the incumbent agents and there it's going to be more of a personality match um, because they all know that they can do the same thing right so let's get to um, your model right now so i'm just going to pull up um, the spreadsheet right now just give me one second uh -oh. where is it let me just find it Give me one sec. Okay, so can all of you open up this model right now? And when you click on it, you just have to click. It's gonna say open and you can say open with Google Sheets or you can simply just copy and paste it. So I'll give you like 30 seconds, just so you have your own um, model. So let's just make sure that it's working for you because I'm gonna walk you through one model and then you're gonna do your own. If you've got it, great. You could just minimize it and come back to this screen because I'm going to walk you through the exercise. Okay. So if I want a net income of 300,000 and my expenses are going to be 30%, that means I'm gonna have about 90,000 in expenses. If I'm an individual agent, I'm probably not going to have a team, obviously, and be paying referral fees. So that means that I need to get a total gross income of 390,000. So what is the average commission in your neighborhood right now that you work on? Can someone unmute and tell me what they believe the average commission they make per home is?
This year I averaged 25. Okay, thank you. So let's put in 25,000 is the average commission. So that's an average sale price of about a million dollars, okay? So if that's the case, and if I wanna make 390 gross at 25,000, I have to do 15.6 units sold. So then I have to decide, okay, where am I gonna get that from? Well, in this model, let's say it's 50% listings, which is 7.8 listings sold. The conversion rate here in this model is 70, but I'm gonna change it to 90 and I encourage you to do it too, because I think that's a bit more reasonable for Toronto. So I need to take 8.7 listings. And if my conversion rate is, I'm going to use 80% here, then that tells me I need to go on 10.8 total seller appointments. Okay. And then on the buy side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. It's 50%. So we're good. Um, what would you say, and could someone unmute themselves and answer this question, is from the amount of buyers you work with, how many do you actually convert? So out of 10, what do you usually convert? Is it two, five, seven, nine? What is it? Can someone unmute and let me know? I plugged it in as nine. Nine, so you're converting about 90% of your buyers? Yeah, they're mostly from my sphere, so it's already kind of pre-qualified in a sense. Perfect, thank you. Okay, and then from every buyer consultation that you go on, if you're going on 10 buyer consultations, how many do you actually work with? So out of 10 buyers that you meet, how many do you end up working with? Can someone unmute and just tell me what that number is? Put it at seven. Seven, okay, 70%, so we can leave it there, perfect. So now we basically have my rough model for you, which you're gonna start doing yourself now. But it tells me right now, if I just follow this model, I need to go on one listing appointment a month and one buyer appointment a month. So what I'm gonna ask everyone to do right now is on a piece of paper, I want you to write down, imagine it's 12 months from now, you've had a great year, how much money would you like to make? This is your model. You pick the number. And you have to write it down. Your hand is a neural pathway to your brain. So you have to write these numbers down. Okay, so. Now what I want you to do is cross out that number and I want you to double it. And before you have a big heavy sigh and a groan, just play along with me here. Just double that number and put it, write it down on a piece of paper. And what I've learned is that most agents will not set really high goals because they're afraid they're not going to make them. And that's completely understandable. But there's the thing called the gap in the gain. And once you understand this concept, you'll, you'll be willing to set higher goals. See, most of you, like me, were gappers. We were raised as gappers. And what I mean by that is we would come home uh, with our report card from, a, you know, from school and we'd give it to our parents and we'd have five good marks and maybe one not so good mark. And the entire conversation was just based around the bad mark. If you remember, it's probably what happened. And so it's because your parents, they didn't, it's not that they didn't mean well, it's just they were focused on what's wrong instead of what's right. And so they would focus and go, oh, we really got to work on this one. And then it's almost like if you um, are perfectly dressed, your hair is beautiful, everything's great, and you've got that little pimple, and you just focus on what's wrong. So we're kind of natural gappers. But what I'm going to ask you to do is just suspend that for a little bit. If you double your income, so if you wrote 200,000 down and now you're at 400, what if we landed at 350? What if we, what if we did that? If we land at 350, you can either focus on the 50,000 that you didn't get, or you can look back, which is in gratitude to the gain and go, wow, I made 150,000 more than I thought I was going to do. 
So that's why I'm asking you to set this big goal. If you don't hit it, great, but you're gonna get a lot higher than your lower goal. And when I was teaching this course across Canada last year, like it was all around this time, obviously, because this is when everyone's thinking about it. And in the last week or 10 days, I've gotten so many emails from people across Canada going, Glenn, I hit that double, my, that double your income goal. Like I never thought it, I didn't believe you when you said it, but I hit it, like I can't believe it. I'm like, yep, that's what happens when you write it down, when you set that goal, it will actually, and you do the work, you're gonna do it. So now what I want you to do is to pull up your own uh, Excel spreadsheet. And I'm gonna give you about five minutes to do this because we have a break coming in six. I want you to just start with your net income. What's the net income you wanna make? And then use 30%. So you're gonna have to kind of, um, you know, take 30% of that number, fill it in here on the expense thing, forget about cost of sale right now, and that's gonna give you your gross income. Then I want you, like the average commission in Toronto is $17,000 if you want to use the average, right? But yours could be higher or it could be lower. Like if you're just doing downtown condos, it's going to be lower compared to doing detached homes. And then you have to just make a decision here on what percent is going to come on the listing side and what's on the buy side. Okay, then put in your conversion rates, then you're going to get this number. So I'm going to give you five minutes now. I'm here, if you want to ask me questions live, great. If you wanna go in the chat, I'll be watching that too. So I'm gonna stop my share so that you can pull up your own Excel and start working on it.
Okay, so are most of you finished now or do you want a few more minutes? Uh, Deborah asks, what's a typical average cost of sale? Uh, Deborah, that's only if you have people on your team and you'd be maybe on a 50-50 split or whatever split you are with the buyer agent. We're going to be covering that more when we get to the budget model after this break. Well, we're going to do lead generation first. For this exercise, I would just leave it blank. So if you could put in the chat or you could unmute yourself and tell me when you got to the bottom, how many appointments do you actually have to do on your model for on the buy side and the sell side? Just let me know. Perfect. So we've got five per month. We've got two seller, two buyers. So here's the cool thing is now divide that number by four. And that will tell you what your core focus is per week. So if it's two sellers and two buyers, you're probably going to have to go on, you know, half an appointment a week or one every two weeks. And if you played the game and doubled your income, you'd realize that, hold on, I doubled my income here. And that's, I just have to go on a couple of appointments. I hope that it'll be like really achievable for you, you know? So Alice has got eight listings, eight and a half buyers, perfect. So it's just two a week and that's what your core focus is now. All I need to do when we get to the lead generation model after the break is just focus on just got to book two appointments. Because if I book my appointments and I know my conversion rates, that's the best part of the model. You're not going to get appointments. None of what I'm talking about matters today, so. Uh, yeah. Um, if you want, uh, I just had a message to me. If you want, you can put your cap and royalty in as a cost of sale on your model, um, just to be more accurate, um, because it is truly your cost of sale. It could also go under expenses. Um, so you could put it either place right now. The typical cost of sale is mostly splits and referral fees. Okay, so it is 1022. I just ran about two minutes late. We're going to take a five minute break that shouldn't last more than 10 minutes. So um, you can finish up your model. I'll be here if you have any questions. You can send me private messages, put it on the group chat, whatever you want. And we'll see you back at 1032. And we're going to move into the lead generation model. And then I'm going to give you five, four really amazing hacks for you to uh, set up to double your income in the next 12 months.
And you can all feel free to unmute if you want to ask me any questions, or you can just go to the chat. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Good, good. Good. Um, yeah, how do I how do I copy the Excel sheet? I... Um, you can just usually hit copy or just click it or download it and open it in Google Sheets on your computer. Okay, how from where? I don't see it here. Where do I um, okay? So it should have been sent to you from Daniela. You know what? Nothing was sent to me. The only thing was sent to me was the invite to to the event, and that's okay. it. Yeah, I couldn't even log in. We had a problem with that link. Okay. But I don't have anything. So um, Daniela just put in the chat. If you email her at agent services at kwnr.ca, she'll send it to you right away. Okay, beautiful. Okay, I'm just copying her. I'll send it to her now. Perfect. Okay, thanks. No problem, thanks. Okay, we're gonna start in two minutes.
Okay, let's get going. So now we're going to talk about um, the second model of the business planning clinic, which is the lead generation model. And the first decision um, that you'll have to make, and we're going to do a few exercises to help you explore that, is do you want your business to be marketing based, which is more money intensive, it's more passive, long term results. So that would be like geographic farming, um, more advertising benches, like it just costs you a lot of money, it's passive, but you're hoping that people will reply to what you're offering. Or do you want to make it prospecting, which is um, just more time intensive, you're actually proactively out there, but you do have a higher chance to get immediate results. Uh, what we've learned right now is, especially with um, Kate in command with the Facebook Lead Accelerator, is a lot of the marketing-based things seem to be working, followed up by prospecting. So it's marketing-focused and prospecting-enhanced. You can also do it more prospecting-focused, and but enhancing that with your own marketing, um, like your own brand development and stuff like that. So here's... Um, I guess the first thing I want to really talk about before we really determine where you're going to start lead generating. And if you want to, um, once I finish this, you can open your manual. I'm going to be on page 11 and it's going to show you um, a whole bunch of prospecting and marketing examples. So uh, the one thing I'm going to ask you to think about today is to keep doing what you're doing, but start putting maybe 20% of your time in focusing into your own niche market. And um, what is a niche market? It's, it's really a market that you bring yourself to. And it's something that you're passionate about. It's uh, someone who you wanna be a hero to. And what happens is if you're passionate about it, you start attracting like-minded clients. We call them perfect fit clients. So you have to start thinking, okay, who do I want to be a hero to? Like, who's got a big problem? Could it be a young family that's got two kids under five and they're thinking about moving to a great school district? Could it be a senior who wants to downsize? Could it be divorces? Could it be, you know power sales? Um, could it be investment properties? You have to start thinking um, maybe a little differently than you have right now, where is what's one market that I could just go in and probably dominate? You're also going to learn how to speak to a prospect's hot button by using their DOS, which is um, it's dangers, opportunities, and strengths. And I'll be going through that at the end of the presentation because I've learned that if you can use this, your conversion rate goes up to about 90%. Um, it's just a really cool thing. Um, and then test it, like, you know, dip your toe into the market. Uh, you know, in the next 90 days, spend 20% of your time here. But the big question you've got to ask yourself is, does this potential niche market bring me joy and energy? Um, is it a, a group of people I'd love to serve? Um, is it fascinating and motivating for me all the time? So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I was referred to someone in British Columbia um, who was looking for a coach. And um, her story was that her husband left her when her twin girls were two years old and just kind of like took off. And so she wasn't too happy about it. And obviously when you talk to her, like clearly hates men. Um, and so uh, I was talking to her and, and I said, well, what's your mission? And she said, um, well, I, I just don't wanna have any other person go through what I went through. I wanna help, I wanna um, get a group of people together to buy investment properties so they can be economically independent um, and make their own choices where, whether they're um, you know a man or a woman leaves them um, in that kind of situation so i said oh that's awesome and she said well what do you mean and i said well why don't we call it a man is not your financial plan and um and then we created this niche market for her where uh, every four weeks she would get a whole bunch of group, group of ladies together um, who hate men and they like to drink wine and they buy investment properties together. Um, and it's, it's been really, really successful for her because 
because that's what she was passionate about. She's the only one who could pull that off and gather that group of people. So you have to ask yourself, you know, who do I want to serve? You know, if you've got young kids, maybe you create like a mummy or daddy group or whatever. Um, and through that, you just build, you know, your whole business because those people are going to be moving up. They're in the prime of their, you know, either buying their first home or selling their first home and moving to a second home. So start thinking a little bit outside of the box here and go like, who do I really want to be a hero to? Like, who do I want to serve? You know. So this begins and you can take a photo of this if you want, but you have to plan it from your customer's point of view. So in the example I just talked about, if you want to help young parents with two kids under five years old who want to move to a better school district, well, what's their compelling reason to do this? Well, most parents, their only thoughts are about creating a better life for their children. And the best schools give their children the best connections and the best chances to succeed. So what's the exact product I'm offering? It could be a guide or a seminar on how to pick the best schools for kids. You could create a Facebook page called the top 10 best school districts. Um, you could highlight these. Like there's lots of different specific marketing pieces that would only go to those people who are really looking for it. And why is it so different from what other agents are offering? Because when you're targeting only, into only one market, you're addressing this big thing. What is keeping them awake at night? And that's how you should really think about planning your lead generation strategy for 2021 is who do I want to be a hero to? What's keeping them awake at night? What's their biggest problem? Right? And it's this unique knowledge they need to make a great decision in their own self-interest. And you can help people live better lives by helping them create better futures for their families. So this is what I'm going to really, this is the key, by the way, of building a highly profitable, perfect fit, high margin real estate business. I'm giving all of you permission right now to get rid of all the old notions of our real estate industry, like that you somehow have to um, door knock and cold call to get business. I mean, can we just forget about that stuff right now? It, it, it's not the way anymore. You can still door knock, but you should be doing warm door knocks or warm marketing, which means when you get a listing, you should be going around to 25 neighbors on either side of the house and 50 across the street and telling them about the property and, uh, you know, inviting them to a virtual open house uh, that you say, hey, on Thursday from seven to nine, I'm going to be at the house. Come on, join this. Um, I'll walk you through it if you know of any friends who are thinking about buying. And you can do this all during like the exclusive period before it even goes on to MLS. Because let's be honest, once it's on MLS, it's out of your control. You don't have that chance um, to, build, um, to build a market. So the other thing I'm going to ask you to do is um, so everyone who bought and sold with you over the last two years, I want you to call them and just ask these two simple questions. And the call could be, or a text, whatever way you, you communicate with these people, it starts with, hey, I was just driving by your house and I was thinking about you. And um, so how are you? Like, just how you doing? And, you know, people respond. They'll tell you how they're doing. And then um, they're going to ask how you're doing and you're going to respond. And then you can say, how's your home? And that's when they're going to say, oh, my God, we love it. It's so amazing. Thank you so much. We love this place. You were so great. They're going to completely fill your bucket. And um, but you are not allowed to on this call bring up real estate. You have to wait for them to bring it up because uh, there's nothing worse than when someone calls you to see how you're doing and then asks you for something. It, it, people just don't like it. So you just call with total curiosity saying, how are you and how's your home? And people will tell you <laughs> if there's a problem, like if one of their toilets isn't working, I will tell you, go hire a plumber through Jiffy and send it over like right away. But this is what we do here is we're getting top of mind positioning with everyone who's bought and sold in the last two years. And you might think, well, why would I do that? They're not going to move. It's like, it's not them. It's the people they know. And when you get top of mind again, and your phone number is at the top of their phone, when they're talking to their friends over the next couple of days, they're going to think about you. And here's what we did. So I tested this 
six years ago on the double your income group. And here's the best result we got. One of the people called their 38 past clients that they had bought and sold in the last two years and got 14 referrals in 14 days by simply not calling, not wearing a shirt that says I heart referrals, not like sending a stupid sticker that says I heart referrals, not calling and going, this is a business call. I'm, I'm you know, who do you know is thinking about buying or selling? It's because they just called, they showed up, they cared and they asked how they were doing. And so I'm going to tell you right now that if you want to kickstart next year and this year, it's just over the next couple of days, call everyone who bought and sold a home from you and just ask them these two simple questions. You know, how are you and how's your home? Not like, you know, hi, do you know anyone who's thinking about buying or selling? Like, that's so stupid. And the other thing I'm going to say is you have to start thinking about having winning refer like winning real estate conversations with your clients. Now, many of you already do, but I'm, there's also some of you who, when someone says to you, how's, how's the business, how's real estate, how's the real estate market, how are you doing? Like you will reply by saying, um, it's great, we're really busy, or I'm really busy. And that's great because you want to project that you're successful. The problem with that approach, though, is that your client doesn't hear that. Your client goes, oh, good, they don't need my help, or oh, they don't need my help. What if instead you started having winning real estate um, conversations instead of losing real estate conversations? So an example of that would be if I'm calling a past client who's got two young kids and has um, just moved up or in the last year, when they say, how's the market? I'm going to say, oh, it's great. And I just helped a young family get into this school district. You know, they were really struggling because they weren't sure if they could afford it, but we were able to get a really great deal on a property for them. And then we put their house on the market and we got multiple offers. And so the gap to move up was really small. And they were able to put like over $100,000 into RESPs for their kids or, or pay for renovations. That's a winning referral conversation because you're talking to them who probably know people just like you just helped. And this is the way you win the new game. It's all about um, targeted real estate conversations, not it's great and I'm really busy. Like that's just such a, you know, I don't, it's natural for us to do it, but it's just kind of such a losing formula, you know? The other thing I want to talk to you about is that there's seven easy additional transactions from every listing that you sell. And this comes from, I believe it's Dean Jackson. Um, so even when you have your economic model now and it says you have to get 14 listings or 22 listings or 58 listings, whatever your number is, I'm gonna tell you if you follow this model, you're not going to need as many of those listings because I believe there's seven super easy additional transactions every time you list a property. So number one is you could find the buyer for the home, right? You can double end it. That happens a lot. Um, it's, you know, an inquiry comes in realtor.ca, someone calls on the sign, someone calls from the internet, whatever. Like you can easily find a buyer for that home. Or someone comes in or you meet them or they call, but that's not the right home for them. And you offer to show them some more homes. And then you end up finding like that you found a buyer for another home, right? That's an easy transaction. Um, what I've also learned is if you list the property and it sells really quickly, it's, you know, you will often get calls from other people on the street who will say, oh, I'm just wondering, you know, what that property sold for. And then you talk to them and you find out they're actually thinking about selling and you go and get another listing. Or you could get another listing in the neighborhood. You know, someone came and saw that property um, from a, a, not the same street. Um, and then you have a conversation and you can easily, you know, grab another listing. You could also get the backup property of the buyer. So, you know, the buyer sells it and then they go, hey, could you sell my condo downtown? And you go, sure, I'd love to. If you do a great job, you can get a referral from the seller, right? That happens all the time. And then finally, the seventh easiest is you're going to find the seller a home. So what I'd love you to do is take a photo of this or write this down, put it next to your computer. And then every time you take a listing, I want you in 2021, well, even for the rest of this year in 2021, to start thinking about um, what if I could just get three additional pieces of business? Like three, I think is mastery. 
two, you're doing really great. But if you just got two more additional pieces of business every single time you took a listing, then that model you just built um, is going to like blow up and you're going to have the best year ever. And you're going to get to a point where you're making more money in less time. You're in higher margin world. You're going to have a lot more freedom of time and money and relationships and purpose. And, you know, you'll be able to pay off some debt and maybe buy investment properties. You know, it's really cool when you actually start thinking that there's these great models in real estate that if you can just follow them and um, do some of the hacks that I'm, I'm sharing with you today, that you can easily double uh, and even triple your business. It's not that hard. Okay. So um, there's a rule of four that they, they talk about in this course, which is they want you to pick four sources of business or four areas for you to focus your lead generation uh, over the next 12 months. Um, they believe four is kind of like the perfect number. So four to me could be, I'm gonna work my sphere of influence. You know, I'm going to um, try to get more referrals. Um, I'm gonna um, try to get a listing multiplier of two or three from every listing I take. I'm gonna do Facebook targeted ads. I'm gonna do SEO. I'm going to start teaching seminars, online seminars, because you know people are pretty used to coming online just like you are right now for these seminars. So what I want you to do right now is just think about, so I'm gonna let you go to your manual, open up your manual right now. I'm gonna give you two minutes to look at page 11. And there's a whole bunch of prospecting and marketing um, and also a combination, it's called both in the middle. And I want you to write down your four that you want to focus on for 2021. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to do that. Okay, so great. I hope you've uh, written down your four now, and then we'll just move into actually um, building this model for you too. So um, this is on page, uh, I'm gonna leave it on the screen so you don't have to find it in your book, but I believe it's on page, it's page 21 in your manual. So what I want you to think about right now um, let me just get this onto full screen. Uh, for some reason, not working. Is um, you've looked at your economic model now, and if you need to do, you know, thirty transactions in the next year, I've learned that you need to have a database uh, five times the size for the amount of transactions you want to do. So, 
if you want, um, if you have a database of 150 people and you work it well, you should be able to get a 20% yield, which is 30 pieces of business from that database every single year. Some people get 40%, some people get 5%. But you have to make a decision in a way today, like what part of your business is going to be sphere, um, past clients, referrals, and what's going to be colder business. Now, let me let you in on a secret right now. And that secret is that if you look at the top agents in your office and in any office, I'll guarantee you, especially the individual agents, that 80 to 90% of their business is coming from their sphere, past clients, and referrals. It's that because it's people who already know you, like you, and trust you, as opposed to the colder business, which is okay, but it just requires a lot more work and a lot more conversion and a lot more sifting. So if you are new to the business or you don't have a database, you, you're going to have to multiply that by 50. It's actually one in 50 is the conversion rate. So if you want to do 20 deals next year, you're going to have to build a database of a thousand people. So that's just the models of, that they figured out at Keller Williams, that it's about 20% when you're working sphere of influence and it's about 50 to one. So five to one there and then 50 to one on the cold market. And you decide which one you want to work with right now. So what you're gonna to have to do right now is fill in the contacts you need to achieve your goal. How many contacts do you have now? And then how many do you need? What's the gap there? And then just decide how many you're gonna add each month. And then I've asked you on the second part to fill in your four lead generation sources. So just do those numbers quickly. Okay, so then if you go further down that page, there's a thing called the 19 to connect campaign or your 36 to convert. So if you have newer people or someone you've just met then um, who haven't worked with you before or you're doing a geographic farm area, then you're probably going to have to follow their model which is four quarterly calls, 12 monthly emails, two promotional direct mail and one annual event in a neighborhood if that's what you're farming. Personally, I don't really, um, I don't think you should ever do a monthly email newsletter because there's times of the year when people are really looking to buy and sell and there's times when they're not. And I know that's been a bit of a weird year now. Uh, usually it's a lot slower now, but it's just because of this pandemic, it's been the whole market got shifted on us. But in a traditional year, I would not be, if I was geographic farming, I would not be send, sending anything in December and January or in um, late June, all the way till late August. Instead, I would kind of clump it together and do, you know, six mailings from like the middle of February till the middle of May. And then I do the other six would be the beginning of September till the middle of November. If you, if you think about it, this is how the rest of the world works. Like, Right now, there's no Halloween advertising because it's past. The Christmas advertising is now coming up. There's no RSP advertising because you're not going to think about that until January. And that's when they're going to put all their budget to get it in front of your eyes at that moment. There was no advertising for, you know, sun getaways. Um, and now you're seeing it all the time. Here's there's a sale, get book your winter vacation. So that's what the rest of the world does. They, they bulk 80% of their marketing when people are about to consume it. So, so think about that. If you're going to be doing like, instead of 12 annual mailers, do like two groups of six. You know? And then your 36 to convert campaigns is basically four quarterly calls where you call your clients your past clients every three months just saying, hey, how you doing? Thinking about you. Um, I personally think that's too much. Um, I think you should probably call them twice a year. 
Um, but you can easily do, um, you know, market reports that you could send to them. You could send them prospects sold on their street. You could get, um, you know, Treb market reports. Um, there's a lot of great things that you can do. Um, what we're seeing right now in the new Zoom world is our most successful agents are doing evening or Saturday morning get togethers with their past clients. So one of our agents is running uh, bingo every Saturday morning with their past clients. They've done over 70 transactions just from running that bingo for the last six months. And it's just a family thing. They get together It's from nine to 11 a.m. every Saturday morning, they have prizes. I know some people who are doing, um, they're going to their core advocates, their top 20 clients and sending them three bottles of wine and inviting them to wine tasting uh, that where they bring in a sommelier and you come on, it's a Thursday night from 7.30 to 8.30 and you all come on together and you learn about wines and have a drink of wine. I know people who are doing a lot of um, groups together via Zoom. A lot of people are starting to do really great innovative um, investment seminars on Zoom um, and they're recording them. So if people don't see them and also broadcasting it on Facebook Live, so if they don't see it, then people can watch it when they need to. And if you have ever done a Facebook Live video, you'll notice that 80% will watch the video after you're live. That's where you're going to get all your hits. So there's a lot of really cool, innovative things you can do right now. This is the new world of real estate. So if you want to really thrive, just go to where the consumer is. And I'll guarantee you the consumer is spending more time on their phone and their computer than they ever have in their life. So why not just go meet them there, okay? So I'm gonna give you one more hack um, and I want everyone to kind of, so you're gonna need your pen here or pencil and write it down. And um, again, this is from Dean Jackson, who's I think one of the top real estate marketers. Um, and he created this thing called the nine word email that revives dead leads. And um, so, this is what I'm gonna give you one for buyers and one for sellers. And um, while we're doing this live today, I'd love for you to be texting or emailing anyone that you've talked about buying and selling real estate in the last year or two, but they haven't really done anything. And so for buyers, I want you to write down this, these nine words and just put hi blank, whatever their name is. Um, are you still thinking about buying a home in blank, like in whatever area they were looking at? So it's hi, are you still thinking about buying a home in fill in the blank? It's nine words, it's not, don't add to it, don't subtract from it. This has been tried thousands of times and it works. Yesterday when I was teaching this, or two days ago when I was teaching this clinic uh, to the Burlington office, we had so many leads came in live from people because I just said, keep reporting them in the chat. And people were like, oh my God, and two buyers came out, like replied and said, yeah, you know, I've got two listing appointments. Like it's really cool. So if you've got anyone who's just what we call a dead lead over the last year or two, you're going to send to a buyer, are you still thinking about buying a home in blank? And for sellers, it's the same thing. Are you still thinking about selling your home in blank? And it's just magical nine words. So for buyers, are you still thinking about buying a home in blank? And for sellers, are you still thinking about selling a home in, you know, blank? It's amazing what will happen. And I'd love for all of you, just trust me on this, to, uh, while we're talking or on the next break, just send these texts to those dead leads and then please report your results. And I hope today that we can get at least 10 or 20 or 30 leads. Um, well, that you can get those leads and that you can run out and this will be a great kickstart for you to launch the next 12 months. <coughs> Okay, so let's get to the budget model. Everyone's favorite exciting topic. Um, what I've done here is taken a couple of slides from a course called Agent Financials. 
And I'm not sure if it's been taught near Market Center before. It's one of the best new courses that Keller Williams has come out with. Um, and it's really just a great course about understanding money, how it works. And they give this example in there. They say, here's the financially unsound model for a real estate agent. And that's you get your commission check, you split with your broker, and then you take that $5,760, put it in your personal account, which really then goes into your wallet, and then you go spend it. And you don't really put money away for business savings or for taxes. And then next April, all the agents panic because they owe tons of money. Um, so that's what they call the financially unsound model. And then the sound model is this one is where you get the same amount of commission, but now you just create, open your own business account and your personal account. And you put 30% of that money in your business account and 70% goes into your personal account. From your personal account, 40% goes into tax savings, which I think is too high. I think it's really 25% should go in there. And then 75% goes in your wallet. And, you know, I own a, a lot of different companies. Um, I know my one, that one company, Touch33, I have like a separate business, like business account for it and I have a separate credit card account. So when my accountant says, hey, Glenn, can you send me your stuff? I just print off my bank statements from my operating account and from my credit card. And that's it. I don't need a bookkeeper. I don't need it. That's every single dollar that came in. And it's every cost that, I, that went out. And they can do that tax in no time. So, um, you know, get your own business account and your own um, credit card, right? So here's my hacks for this. So you have one credit card, one for business and one for personal. And then your bank account is one for business and one for personal. And then you should, as we're working through this budget now, review it monthly to stay on your budget. Ideally, if you looked at it every week, that would be great. And if you have a problem tracking your expenses, just hire a bookkeeper. Like, honestly, it's 125 bucks. I mean, it's anywhere from 100 to $200 a month for someone who will just track your expenses. And it's really not a lot of money. Um, especially if you're making, you know, 17 or $25,000 at home. Um, you know, it's I'm just telling you, it's really cool. So here's the two, the, the budget model that we're going to talk, and then we're going to take a break in about 15 minutes. So um, you just have to know that the budget, it's a planning tool, you do it annually. And then the profit and loss, which is the P&L, is your management tool that you just look at every two weeks. And what a profit and loss is, it's nothing fancy. It just says, here's the amount of money that came in, that's my income, and here's my expenses. And what's left is either a profit or loss. And so don't ever get sidetracked with accountants telling you these balance sheets and profit loss. It's like so simple. There's very basic accounting you need to understand to run your business. And um, the profit and loss is just a great tool. The other budget terms that we're gonna talk about is the cost of sales, which is the cost of acquiring revenue, whether that be a split to your broker or referral fees paid to other agents. We're gonna talk about your gross profit. We're gonna talk about your operating expenses, which is just the cost of running your business. And then we're gonna talk about your net income. And that's the pre-tax net income after your cost of sales and expenses. So here's the benchmark for the model. It's 30, 30, 40. For most of you, if you don't run a team, forget about cost of sales right now. It's just the 30% operating expenses and your net income should be around 70%, okay? Oops, went the wrong way. So these, um, these are also in your book, but um, this is typically what a cost of sale is. So if you remember our original model when the the real estate agent was the, the mega agent was doing 2.4 million. They were netting 1 million. Um, they had a cost of sales of 30%. And how that breaks down is on their buyer side of the business, they were on 50 50 splits. And then on their listing side, they hired a listing um, assistant, and we'll cover that in a, in a minute. So don't worry about it. Um, and they're paying them 10% of the listing commission. And their job is basically just to support the listing agent. They get all the paperwork ready. They schedule all the stuff so that the listing mega agent just walks in and gets the contract and then passes it on to somebody else. Okay. And then over here, um, based on the MRA, here's basically what the typical um, operating expenses would be. Okay. 
for a mega agent if you were doing 2.4 million. I'm gonna spend about 360,000 on salaries, spend 225,000 on lead generation, 25,000 on rent, spend about 60,000 a year on coaching. Um, they're gonna have some supplies, some tech, their car, um, and that's where they get that number from. So here's the benchmarks that you should be looking at when you're planning your, your you know, next year. What are the benchmarks? What am I spending compared to everybody else? Okay, so in the first example, if you're making 150, you should have a cost of sales 19.5. So that's, you know, if you're, you know, I think your, your cost of sale here will be about 25,000 with your cap and your royalty. As you start moving up, that cost of sale starts to grow because then you're starting to pay referral fees or bringing in a buyer agent. So you'll see this number starts to grow as you're adding team members. And then this gives you a gross profit and we take away your expenses and then we're left with this net income. So this is, this is all in your book, it's in your manual, but they're saying that these are the best practices here. That if you do a million in GCI, your cost of sale should be about 250,000 leaves you with 750,000. Your expenses are 360, you're left with 390. Now, remember, this is based at probably a US model or outside of Toronto, because for you to do a million in Toronto is really 40 transactions. And there's no way you're going to be spending $250,000 on that. So your net's gonna be a lot higher just because our commission is so high. I mean, the average commission in Windsor and London is 7,000. Ours is 17,500. Like, how lucky are we? <laughs> so, okay. And then this is also in your book. So this is the operating expenses by gross commission. And I'm on uh, page 12 of your manual, if you want to just make a note right now. Um, so this is basically... At 150,000, you should be spending about 83.70 in salaries and benefits. So you're probably going to have a virtual assistant. Um, you could, uh, you know, it's going to be someone part time. It's not going to be that much money. Um, 32.70 is your professional services. If you have a lawyer or accountant, then you've got listing management, uh, and general prospect in, in marketing. So this is like taking photos, um, all the expenses related to running a listing, right? And then if you're renting office space, there's a number, here's your education and coaching budget, here's your supplies, here's your phone and computer, here's your car, and then here's any, you know, upgraded to equipment or furnishings, and here's your insurance. So that's the model if you're making 150. So I'm hoping a lot of you have doubled it, so we're going to be up here in that 340 to 640 range. And you're going to see now, you're going to probably, as you get to a certain level, you're going to be needing more, um, more, you know, full-time help, and um, you know you'll be requiring more professional services, and your costs start to go up over here too. So um, you know, and then the rest of them stay fairly consistent down here. So I would like everyone to write on their piece of paper uh, these four numbers: thirty-six dash sixty. So thirty-six dash sixty dash 84 dash 120. So I'll do it again, 36 dash 60 dash 84 dash 120. 36, 60, 84, 120. What those numbers represent is the level you need to get to before you start building a team. So if you can get up to about most, I know in my experience, most agents can handle 30 to 40 transactions on their own and then they're maxed out. So I'm just picking the number 36, almost in the middle of that. And that's the actual transactions they did. Never mind like the offers they lost or the clients who didn't buy or sell from them. And then at some point you just get so maxed out that you need to get some administrative help. And that's when you hire an administrator. And if you just hire one person, then you should be able to go to 60 transactions a year because that admin person is taking all of the admin off of your plate. So it's 36 by yourself, add an assistant, you're gonna to get to 60. Once you get to 60, that's when you think about adding a buyer agent to the team. 
And that buyer agent should be doing at least two deals a month, which is another 24 transactions. And that's how we get to the number 84. So 36 by myself, 60 with an assistant, 84 with one admin or one buyer agent. And then at, once you get there, that's when you bring on the second buyer agent. And that second buyer agent should be doing 24 the following year, but your original um, buyer agent should be getting up to 36. So that's why there's a difference of 36 there. 12 more for your existing buyer agent and 24 for the new one that you added. So if you start thinking about that, you're gonna start seeing on the screen here that, um, well, your cost of sales will just start to go up, but so will your income. And you know what, if you're doing 120 deals in Toronto right now, you know, you got a two and a half million dollar business. Like that's a really great business to be running. So, so if you can go to your, um, here. let me just walk through it. So what I want you to do right now is you're going to open up your Excel spreadsheet and in here, you're going to open up the tab. Let me just get it for you. It says this, um, uh, where did I put my Excel spreadsheet? One sec. If you go down to the bottom where you click this thing that says budget model on the very bottom of your screen, what mm -hmm. I want you to do right now is start putting in what is the amount of money you want to make next year, what percentage is going to come from listings and buyers, okay, what's your referral income, and then you're going to get a total. And you can just type in these numbers, it's no problem, type in whatever you want to do. Then you're going to get this net income and then you're going to write, um, you know, this will be where your cap goes in, uh, any of your royalty, any of the splits you're on. And then this is going to give you this total commissions paid out. So that's the first part. And if you guys can finish it, because we're going to go on a break in about seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes. So if you can just start filling that out and you can fill it out during the break. And then after that, we're going to go to the full chart of accounts where you can actually start plugging these monies in. And then what happens is you're going to end up getting like your own profit and loss statement. So we talked about the economic model and then we talked about the lead gen model. So now you just need to take a few minutes and start plugging in these numbers because by the end of today or at the end of this course, um, you're going to have all your models complete. And then that's what's so cool about this course. So I'll let you work on that. Um, I'll take this the share down if you can go and open and if anyone has any questions you can just um, type them in below I'm here or you want to talk um, on the chat we can I mean talk live we can do that too okay oh my gosh
Sorry, I just realized I was muted. So it's 1120, it's time for our break. So if you guys can be back in 10 minutes and um, if you got any questions or if you're struggling with anything, you can simply text, put it in the chat or unmute yourself and I'm here to answer.
Okay, we're going to start in two minutes. Okay, so let's go to the final, um, the last two models uh, of this course. And one is the organizational model. This all starts on page uh, 14 in your manual, but what's in your manual is exactly what's on gonna be on my screen. So you can just kind of follow along. So this is the end game for the millionaire real estate agent, which is you are here and you've stepped away from the business and you've hired basically four people. You've hired a CEO um, who is gets the direct report from the director of sales. This is the front stage of your business. They've hired an expansion director, a director of operations, and a director of lead gen. So that was you. You're going to see that this is you. You actually had to hire these people, and then you get to step away. But let's start at the beginning. At the first level, so just up to 36 transactions, all your whole core focus should just be on personal productivity, on lead gen, capture conversion, present to buyers and sellers, show buyers, market sellers, write contracts, bring it to closing and manage your money. This is your 80% of your core activities and your results every year will be based on what percentage of the week are you spending in number one here. And then the second part is your mindset and your vision. Like you have to mind your mind. Like you have to be always thinking about your thinking because while as agents, we all look good. If we ever took our shirts off and you saw the, our backs, you would see a whole bunch of lashes that we've had to endure um, and setbacks throughout our real estate career. So setbacks are going to happen. It's just, um, you know, how you react to what's going to happen. And that's where the whole inner game comes into play. Like you have to be always uh, working on what we call the internal disarmament of yourself, um, which is just making sure your, your inner game is good because your inner game, it's just your mindset, your beliefs, your energy, your you know physical being, like it's all gonna get reflected on your outer game. And um, I'll tell you, when you spend weeks, when 80% of your week is doing this, you have a great real estate business. Unfortunately, for many agents, this could be 5% or 10% of the week. So what I've learned in coaching thousands of people is that um, there's no relationship between the amount of money you make in real estate and the amount of time you spend in it. And most of the time when I say to people to double their income, they automatically believe it's doubling your time. And it's not even related. I know some agents who work seven days a week, 16 days, 16 hours a day, and make 50 grand or 70 grand. And I know other agents who work six months a year and make $2 million. It's just what is their key focus. And when they're at work, they work. And when they're not at work, they don't work. Um, so I would just say this first level, you know, this is your core activities for the next 12 months. Then once you get up to about 30, between 30 and 40 deals, this is when you start looking at your first hire. 
which is your admin. Now, what most agents do is they bring on a buyer agent onto their team at this point, which just, it just, it's not going to work. I'll, I'll tell you, it's very rare that it works out. Um, you have to get your systems and your foundation strong before you bring on another person onto your team. And your admin role can be virtual initially. It could be one day a week. You could share an admin. Um, I did that for about six years. Um, we just split the salary and I'd have the admin one, one week, three days. They'd have the other one two days and then we'd alternate. But we'd also swap if we, one was really busy. Um, so you have to start thinking about your admin hire as an investment, not as an expense. So um, the research we did was it takes about 20 hours for you to sell a listing. And if the average commission's say $17,000, then that's about $850 an hour is what you make when you're selling a listing. We also know that the average buyer takes between 60 to 80 hours. So if we use 80 hours into 17,000, you're just, just above $200 an hour. So if you think about that's what you get paid when you're actually doing those core activities, hiring an admin person for 20 or $25 an hour is an investment. You're buying back your time. Um, it's, if you think about it that way, if I can buy 10 hours of admin for $25 an hour, and I replace that with 10 hours of $200 an hour with a buyer or $800 an hour with a seller, it's, it's a game changer. And a lot of people get nervous about bringing on their first hire and I understand it, I've been there. But when I brought my, when I finally made the commitment to bring on an admin person, and this was probably like 1999, I think. Um, I think I went from like 200,000 a year to 400,000 and it cost me 30,000 for this admin person. So it was like a six to one return. It's just the freedom you get when you do it is just so amazing. So don't ever, if I can convince you to not think about it as an expense, think about it as an investment that you're holding accountable to get a return. And then the next level is as you start getting up to 60 deals, you're, I don't know if you're gonna need a transaction coordinator. I think you're gonna need more like a, um, a social media uh, or a digital, uh, media advisor or hire them on a contract basis to be doing some of your stuff or keeping pace with um, your content. Um, I think that's the, the hire that you need at that point. Um, and, you know, if you're doing 60 deals, you can afford to pay this person and they're usually on a contract basis. So you just hire them by the month or for three months and you say, okay, take over this one area of my business. So, there's a great book if you want to explore this more. I'm going to just stop the share for a second so you can look at me. And it's a book called Who Not How. And that's by my coach, Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And um, they really just solve the riddle here. And it's like, whenever you're thinking about how I should do something, just don't think about that. Think about who could do it for me. How can I buy back my time to get that done? So Who Not How is a really, really great book. It's one of my favorites right now. I'm also reading this book right now called Unhackable by Carrie Oberbrunner. Unhackable. And um, his whole thesis is, listen, you're getting distracted. You're getting hacked everywhere for your attention. And he gives you a game plan here, a 30 day model to follow where you can get a little bit more focused and to the point where you actually become unhackable, you know? Selfishly, you should all go buy this book too. It's my book, the Shutdown Slingshot book. Um, it's available there on the Amazon if you want um, because that will help you with your inner game, the mindset game, the minding of your mind, okay? So, uh, where, where are we here? I get my PowerPoint back. Okay, so let's continue with the uh, organizational um, model. So we've got admin, then we've got admin, and then what I call um, 
unique vendor services. Like I need this one project done. And what I'm gonna do is hire someone to do that project for me. Um, uh, you might, at this point, this could be building your own website. Uh, not You don't build it, you hire someone else to go and do it. So you just have to touch it. You know, I'm getting a new website built for me right now. And I basically have a group working on it. And every week we talk for one hour, they tell me where they are, they tell me what what's going on, but that's my who. And they're solving how to do my how. I have no time to learn how to build a website, you know, or improve a website. And then once you get up to the next level is where you start thinking, okay, um, I'm gonna add a showing assistant would be level one. And this is gonna bring you up to 84 transactions. But because you're actually, it's not a showing assistant, I would really call it a buyer agent. Um, you're not gonna have as much time because you're managing this person, you're overseeing some of these, that there's an argument that says, maybe I should hire an outside um, uh, like lead, like an outside sales agent or an inside sales agent. So, um, so how that looks is this, um, you would pay someone, um, and I think the going rate right now is 15%, uh, and their job, an outside person, is to call and get you listing appointments booked. And when you get a listing appointment booked and you list it and it closes, you pay that person 15% of the listing commission. And I'm sure most of you would have no problem paying 15% for someone who's going to book an appointment and you only pay them when the property closes. And then you can also have an inside sales associate. So let's say you're using Facebook lead accelerator or agent locator or some of the other lead generation platforms. This person is scrubbing those appointments for you. Like they're going through the leads, they're following up right away, they're scrubbing it and then they're booking appointments for you. And only when they book an appointment and that buyer um, buys a place and it closes, you would pay them 15% of the buyer side of the commission. So this is the new world order right now. Um, many individual agents will be struggling because a lot of the big teams have figured this out already. And they've got teams of inside and outside salespeople who are just generating their leads for them. And you can compete too. You can go on Kijiji, you can go in other places and look for people. And these people, like they love it. They sit at home in their pajamas and they just call all day long. And you think about it, on a $17,000 commission, they're gonna make 2,200 bucks. Um, and you know, it's not a lot of work for them. I know some of these inside salespeople are making hundreds of thousands a year uh, because that's all they do. They just love to be on the phone. And that's your who now, like that's my who to solve my how, you know? And then the second level of four is as you get your lead buyer agent, you start bringing in a rental assistant or a showing assistant and then you bring in a lead manager who oversees this. So this is the front stage of your business, meeting clients, you're meeting clients. This person is beginning to be the backstage because they're managing this front stage of these people reaching out. And then this is your entire backstage team. All they do is make sure the production runs. So if you imagine, if you're putting on a play, the backstage are the people who are like um, the directors, the producers, and you're the diva on the front stage and your characters, the, the other characters are your lead buyer agents and your outside salespeople. So they're all front stage, client facing, but your core always runs from a really solid backstage, which is your lead admin transaction coordinator. And then you start moving up. You know, okay, level five, there's two ways to do this. We're gonna, you still have this lead manager um, handling this. You've got, so this is like a carryover from level four, but here you start bringing on your listing, either you hire a lead listing agent or you bring on a listing assistant because right now you're just running with listings here. They're running with all your buyers. And um, you basically pay them 10% of the commission and they come on the listing appointment, you get the contract signed, you leave. And your job is only now to negotiate it. Um, their job is to follow up, it's to get all the tax records, all the paperwork, get arrange the floor plans, photography, staging. They do all of that and they get 10% of the commission. And it's a really good gig. And what you do is you're grooming this person to eventually be you so that you can step away in your business. 
And then level six, we just start going to, okay, now we've got all this running right now. We have a director of sales running that division. I have a director of lead generation and a director of operations. So three key reports, and I'm just still doing the listing side of things. But then I go, you know what? We're doing a lot of business. We're kind of dominating this area. Maybe I'll duplicate my team in Kitchener or St. Catharines or London or wherever you want to duplicate it. So what you do is you turn on your lead generation machine, you run it for about two months. These people are scrubbing the leads for you. You're getting more qualified leads. You start looking for an agent in London, Ontario, usually at a Keller Williams office or anywhere else. And you say, hey, listen, would you like to be my expansion partner? You keep doing your business, but I'm going to be sending you leads and we're going to be on a 50-50 basis. And uh, we know some great teams um, in the U.S. have got up to 90. I believe Sandy McKay is doing a great job in Southern Ontario, just duplicating himself uh, throughout. Um, so that's a really cool part of the model. And as this grows, then you move to this level where you actually bring in a director. So it's me. I've got four key reports. Okay, and then we move to the next and final model where I replace myself. I now bring in a CEO. I step back they're running the business. I'm managing the money. I'm, I've got the vision now. I spent all my time on the vision. Uh, I'm looking for new opportunities for all these team members. Maybe we're going to buy income properties together. I'm, I'm, all I'm thinking about is how do I build more wealth for these people? And that's the kind of organizational model for the um, millionaire real estate agent and now the business planning clinic. So now it's your opportunity there's the sheet on the page so there's you and now who are you going to add to your team in the next 12 months or next three months or six months so i'm going to give you a couple of minutes to just think about what does your organization look like a year from now and who do you need to start you know um, hiring right now to start filling those roles so i'll give you two minutes on that Okay, great. So let's uh, continue on. So let's pull it all together right now. Okay. So we've started off with the five um, big goals that you want to achieve over the next 90 days, right? So we looked back 90, we did the present, then we looked into the future, we focused on five core activities. 
And then from there, we went into the economic model. So I asked you all to double your income and then break it down to how many buyers and sellers, what's your conversion rate, what is your conversion from appointments, conversion from contracts, and then how many appointments do you need to generate per month? And then we divided that by four and you got it was 0.5 or 1.2 or two per week. Um, so now we know what our economic model is. And then we had to go, okay, now we have to move to our lead gen. How are we gonna get these appointments? And so your job was to pick four key focus areas. And I gave you some hacks on what you should be doing, calling, you know, calling your past clients, asking them the two questions. How are you? How's your home? We gave you a hack on uh, texting or emailing any of your um, dead leads right now over the last year. And please, if anyone's responded, just put it in the chat so everybody could see. Um, because we're trying to get some leads right now. Because we know that from when you meet somebody, till they actually, you get paid, can be anywhere from three to nine months. So I don't want you to be thinking, oh, I'm not gonna lead generate for the next six weeks, because if you do that, you're just gonna be pushing off your success. And what I've also learned is that everyone has two good quarters in real estate. I don't know why it works that way, but you always have two good quarters. So if you've had a bad quarter now, good news, you've got two good quarters coming up. And if you've had two good quarters, hate to break it to you, but it's going to drop a little bit as you kind of replenish all of your people and then you'll rent back up again. And so never get discouraged if you're off your goal after the first quarter. It's just what happens. Um, and what I've learned about that is that you have to look at everyone you're working with right now and just ask yourself this question. Are they a yes, a no, or a maybe? If they're a yes, they have to do something in 30 days, then you have to put 80% of your effort on those people. If people say, no, we're gonna take our house off the market, we're gonna wait till next year to buy, just say, okay, like don't push them, don't force them. In my 31 years of selling thousands of properties, I've never ever convinced someone to buy a house. It's like when it's their time, it's their time. And when it's not, it's not. So just say, great, thank you. And why don't I follow up with you in another month or two? So just get, get that settled. Because the big problem that most agents work with are the maybes. The maybe I'll buy a house if I get a great deal. Maybe I'll sell if someone gives me 20% above fair market value. Maybe, 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 maybe. And this is what will kill your business. It will kill your quarter because you might be working with 10 maybes right now and it's the, none of them are doing anything. And I'm going to ask you over the next six weeks to force your maybes into a decision to be, yes, you have to do something or no, I'm not going to do something because you need to clear off your maybes. They, there's so many businesses have gone under because they were waiting for a, maybe a purchase order to happen that never came through. So I don't want you to be in that situation. So just force them into making a decision. And, and the other thing I would say is once you start working with people who are friendly and cooperative, who they know what they want, they're motivated, they listen to you, they respect you, they look for your advice, it, the business becomes really easy because the opposite of that are people who don't know what they want, aren't motivated, won't listen to you, they think they know everything, doesn't appreciate the value you bring to it. So for the next year, just focus more on those people who are what we call five-star pro prospects, like know what they want, friendly um, and cooperative, they're motivated, they're realistic, they listen to you, they're appreciative. I mean, there could be 20 great characteristics of them. But when you're working with people, be just be have that awareness of, you know, um, are these five-star prospects or not? Because if they are, then it's a great to work with them. They're high profit margin. They, they buy really quickly compared to the other people. Um, then we talked about, um, uh, you know, I think I already mentioned it, but I'll say it again, calling everyone who bought and sold in the last two years and just saying, how are you? How are you? You know, how's your home? You could also go through your raving fans or your, your great customers, your top 40, and just call them or text them and say, hey, how are you holding up? You know, this is a difficult time for a lot of people right now, and they're not really feeling that great, and they'd love to hear from you. And if you lead that conversation by just saying, hey, I text them, hey, just thinking about you, how are you holding up? 
um, or you call them and go, hey, I just drove by your house. I was thinking about you. How are you holding up? How are you doing? How's your family doing? This is, you know, these are all winning um, formulas for building a great real estate business. So then you, we built your lead generation model. You got your top four. Then we said, okay, we got all these leads coming in. Now we got to manage our money. And then you looked at the percentages and then you built your own model right now. So you can just be checking that, that budget all the time. And um, also part of that is, you know, getting your own bank account and I mean, your own business bank account, your own business credit card and just separating your piles of money because it's really hard when it's just all in one, um, in one place. And then we moved to the organizational model. We talked about the 36, 60, 84, 120 formula, which is I need to get up to like 30 to 40 deals before I add somebody on. Then I'm going to hire admin first. Then I'm going to hire my first showing assistant or buyer agent. Then I'm going to add my second one. And then you start just building out that model. And then it all comes together here on your 411. And this is the really basic 411, which is what's your annual income goal? Okay, this is in your workbook, so you can fill, fill that out. But how, how much money do I want to make in the next 12 months? And then divide it by the month, and then it gives you your monthly goal. And then divide it and just fill in the first week. How much do I have to make this week? And then all your core focus now is if I hit my weekly goal and I hit, hit my monthly goal, then for sure I'm going to hit my annual goal. And that's the kind of business uh, business planning clinic, right? So if you want, you can go to Kelly right now, open up Kelly, sign in, take the course evaluation. You can just select the course and you'll see me as my instructor name. We'd love to get your feedback on that. Um, so if you could just go to Kelly, it would be great to see what you guys think. And then I'll stop my share and open it up to any questions um, uh, that you might have. And I'm just looking at, Oh, okay. look. Oh, that's a great. So Dreninja, I believe. Sorry if I got your name wrong. says, I just got the answer from an old lead and they're still looking. Thank you. Um, so there we go. That's cool. So what's your feedback? What's your insight? What did you learn today? Hey, Glenn. Uh, it's Randall here. May I? Yeah, go ahead, Randall. Yeah. Uh, early on in the uh, presentation, thank you, first of all. It was really great. Um, but early on, you said you had a four question converter dialogue. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Randall, thank you for reminding me. So let's go through that. And I, oh, I'm so thankful and grateful that you reminded me. I, I hate to not share it. So here's the four questions. The first question starts with this. Every time you have a buyer or consultation meeting, the first question is, what would be a successful meeting for us today? What would be a successful meeting for us today? It's a great opening question because you might be nervous or it might be, you know, but it really follows this where it takes the pressure off of you. You can get settled down, capture your breath. And, and also know the other outstanding rule here is that every consultation, you're only allowed to talk 25% of the time and listen 75. And so these four questions kind of force you to do it. So the first question is, what would be a successful meeting for us today? And they're gonna talk. And you just say yes, everything they say, you write down on a notepad right in front of them so they see that you're listening, okay? The second question is, it just probes a little bit different. It's called dangers or fears, right? So that's the theme, dangers or fears, you can write that down. And the question is, well, what other you know, dangers or fears or what else are you worried about in buying your first home or selling your first home? So let's flush that out. And then they're gonna say stuff like this. Well, I don't know if I should sell first or buy first. Is now a good time to buy? Um, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, um, I'm not gonna give my house away. How much do you think my house is worth? Like there'll be some of those questions that'll come up, but you don't answer them yet. You just take them. So they're gonna add three or four more to your list, right? So once we finish that, now we're gonna move them from their present. We're gonna move them out to what we call their positive future. And this is a great technique. So if you imagine if we were married to each other and we're out for dinner, I could say, how was your day today? That's a present conversation. A positive future conversation is, 
you know what, why don't we plan a vacation? Like, where would you love to go away? Like, why don't we talk about tonight and just plan something and get away for another week or two? It changes the whole energy of the conversation because people always like to move into the future and they get excited about that. So the second, the third question is, uh, it's called opportunities. And you go, so tell me about um, what your new home is gonna look like. Like, what are you looking for? Um, can you just paint me a picture? And they're gonna say, oh, well, I'd like something, you know, with a big backyard, with a pool, or I'd like a big kitchen for entertaining. I'd love to, you know, have something with a gym in it. I wanna be able to be walking distance to Starbucks or restaurants if they're still around. Um, they're gonna, the, and what you're listening for is their values. Like they're gonna be really telling you about what they believe in and what they stand for. So you're just taking three or four more notes. You still haven't jumped in and talked. You're just listening to them. And then the fourth um, one is called strengths. And um, so the strength is when you're working with a buyer, it would be, okay, at some point, um, I hope you're not competing to buy a house, but it could come a time when it's me and another agent and the seller is going to say to us or the agent is going to say, well, tell me about your buyer. Like, you know, are they pre-qualified or whatever? And, and the buyer will tell you, yes, we've been pre-qualified. We're looking for this. We had this down payment um, because you've got to frame it in. Listen, I have to fight for you on this. So anything you can tell me right now is all the kind of ammunition I'm going to use to make sure that seller takes your offer. So that's on the buyer side. On the seller side, you it's just switched. It's like you talk about the strengths of their home. So you would say, you know what, um, when we put your home on the market, I'd love to, so that's called an assumptive close. Um, I'd love to know what made you buy this house. Like, what are the strengths of your home? And they're gonna be, oh, well, we love the street. I love the formal dining room. We love the big kitchen. We love the finished basement. I love the master. They're gonna tell you all of the strengths of their home because you're gonna say like, I'm gonna, you know, I wanna know why you bought this because I'm gonna be emphasizing that when I'm talking to any of the buyers who come and see your property. So we started with what's a successful meeting, then what are your biggest dangers and fears? And then we moved them into the future about their opportunity. And then we finished up with strengths. So me, I was more old fashioned. Like I always did a two-step listing process um, so I would always go and do this first and tour the house. And then I would go back again with the price. But what I would do when I did this is I would send them an email and the heading would say, this is what I heard you say. This is what I heard you say. That's the heading of your email. This is what I heard you say. And then I would say, it was great meeting you last night. Um, you told me a successful meeting would be this, 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 and this. You told me that um, you were a little bit worried about this, this, and this, um, that you're looking for a house that has this, 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 and this. And, um, and then finally, a little paragraph about their strengths. And then at the very bottom of the email, I would say, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if I missed anything. And that was such a great question because people say, oh, Glenn, I think you nailed it. Um, no, I think you got everything. Oh, you know, there could have been something else. Because when people are talking, they don't always recall what they said. And when you have a detailed note of what just happened. And so if I was meeting with you and I sent you that email the next day, what would you think of me if you read that email that said, this is what I heard you say? We have a thumb up. You guys can talk too, you know. <laughs> you can fall asleep just listening to me all day, but what would you think if I said that or sent that to you? What would you think about me? Well, I would think that you were obviously uh, pay, paying attention, but it also shows kind of a deeper emotional connection or caring as well. Right, that I care, right? that I was listening, paying attention. Great, Randall, thank you. Yeah, what else? Total confidence. Right, yeah, you probably have confidence in me too, right? You know, what else? I think you develop a trusting relationship because um, you obviously followed through and you listened to them. 
So they're likely to trust you more. Absolutely. So now what we've created is I'm a good listener. I care about you. Um, you got confidence in me and you can trust me. And this is why it works so well on conversion. Because conversion, it, that's what conversion is. Does this person care about me? Can I trust them? Are they competent what they do? Do they, like, you know, that's why it works. And if you're doing a buyer consultation, this is the email that goes back afterwards. And what I've learned by asking those four questions is it takes about seven or eight minutes. So the first seven or eight minutes is all them talking. And now I know exactly what to do. Like I can just answer those questions. I can answer them as when I want to answer them. And it's just such an amazing conversion tool. Because here's the opposite. I was looking for a financial planner a little while ago and I was referred to two of them. And one of them sounded really nice on the phone. And this was pre COVID, like, you know, when you could actually have people over. And um, I said, listen, then it was just a busy week for my wife and I. And, and I said, well, listen, we've got about 45 minutes here because I had to go and pick up my daughter afterwards. And I said, this is what a successful meeting for us would be. And I gave him the five things we were looking for. And he came over and we got to about minute 35 and he had never talked about any of those five things. And I was like, we're not a match. Like, you know, this is what I said was important. We had a limited amount of time because what I was really hearing from him is it was all about him. It wasn't about us. I don't really care about you. I don't, they don't care about you. Your client, you know, they're like, sell my house, you know, they're, they're focused on their own needs. You know? So, so that's the four questions that um, increase your um, contract conversion. So any other questions or thoughts or feedback or what you think about the course? Let me hear it. Thanks for the course, Glenn. It's always, uh, you always give some good insights and food for thought as well. Um, there are a lot of business uh, planning sessions out there and um, yours is a little bit different. And um, I think it's straightforward and uh, and authentic. Yeah, well, thank you, Holly. It's so great to see you, by the way, too. I really <laughs> miss you. Yeah, you look terrific, by the way. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I love this course now because it's just a bit more condensed and, you know, we don't have a lot of time. And so let's just get through it. Yeah. Final thoughts before we say bye? Any? We're good. Lynn, when yes. you were holding up your book, you did it really quickly and I missed it. What was your book? The, oh, the mindset one? You're my favorite. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just um, got the other ones, but I didn't get that one. That down um, slingshot. You can just get it on Amazon there if you want. You can download the McQueenie it. method at glennmcqueenie.com. And there I have a lot of podcasts too, where I'm like, I work with people. It's called the 25 minute success series where, you know, in 25 minutes, we kind of find what their natural strengths are and we find their target market and then we give them the blueprint. Um, so it's also converted to text. So if, uh, if you're ever bored or if you have a hard time falling to sleep, listen to one of my podcasts, you'll be like out in like no time. No problem. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Okay. Well, it's great to see everybody. I really wish the best for all of you. Um, I really hope that uh, we like it's a year from now, we all get back together and you're like, oh my God, I doubled my income. And, and that would be just what, what I would want the most. So um, I wish you a great 2021. It's a great opportunity market right now. This is your chance because so many other agents are in fear right now. And, um, you know, confidence is going to win. Your client's final thought are looking for three things from you. Confidence, clarity, and leadership confidence clarity and leadership and if you show up with confidence clarity and leadership on how to solve their selfish problem you get to win the game so all right bye everybody thank you for joining we'll see you later thanks